the Monday, January the 7th meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. Uh, I'll let staff and members introduce themselves. Go ahead. My name is Martha Smirsky. I'm a member of the committee. Hannah Smith. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett. Aaron Gilbertson. Seth Mitchell. Benjamin Cheney. And unless anybody has anything else to offer, do I hear a motion to approve our agenda tonight? So, so moved. I'll second. Second. All in favor of the agenda, raise your hand. Agenda is approved. We also have a election re-election of chair and vice chair. Do I hear any new nominations from the committee? <laughs> <laughs> Happy with its current status. <laughs> is, that a, that. is that a motion? <laughs> it's a motion to maintain current status. Do I hear a second? I second it. All in favor of maintaining the current staff? I should oppose, I guess. <laughs> You're just doing such a good job. You should abstain. You should both abstain. <laughs> Probably. We'll move forward to the first application. It's for 112 to 116 Main Street. Owner applicant, Sam Shippey. Family Eye Care. Let me get a second chair. <clears throat> and is Sam here? He's not. He's not? Oh, okay. If you're representing yeah, him, sorry, come, up, come up to the table and <coughs> introduce yourself. And Hello. Hello. I'm Roland Tate. Uh, I work with uh, Microgrid Design. Okay. Roland, R O L A N D. Uh, R O L L I N. Okay. Well, um, T A T E. T A I T. T A I. I can't spell for me. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Describe the work on the building. The uh, current building has three shops at ground floor with mixed offices at second floor, and the proposal is for the ground floor to be converted to the shipping eye care offices. With. Uh, the upstairs having three market rate rentable apartments. Um, and the external alterations are fairly minor. There are on the front facade three existing windows at the second floor, which if um, it's handy if you have that to look at. The first sketch shows the existing arrangement, which is the windows divided with one large light in the middle and two either side, and the proposal is to make them more traditional in appearance so that they're more fitting for the... Have you looked at any historic photographs to see what the original configuration No, is? we don't have original photographs that I'm aware of at the moment. I haven't seen them. Uh, so the proposal is to alter the three windows to be three pairs of windows. And then on the alleyway, which is probably easier to see on either the elevation or the three-dimensional view, um, there are a couple of small windows. The window arrangement at second floor is quite irregular. And the existing window arrangement, we're proposing a minor alteration, increasing the size of two small windows to better fit the arrangement of the apartments inside and also to regularize the window arrangement slightly. So, so is that existing 402 and then DR001 are the two we should be looking at for the uh, numbers yeah, of so the Yeah, so existing documents? 402 and then if you want exactly the same view for the proposal it would be DR402. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, the elevation, I've just noticed that that little rectangle should actually be an existing window. I'm sorry, I'm not sure why that hasn't shown up properly on mine. Has it on yours? That's the air conditioner. No, uh, no that, that's a very small window, and the proposal is to increase the size of that one and another small window. I see. So those two windows would be enlarged and they were previously that one and that one. And essentially they're done so that they get better light into the apartments at first floor. Is there any uh, physical evidence that you've seen that the, you 
could restore the size of the windows or were they made smaller or is this the way it was built? The, we think that the brick facade on this face was, um, we think it was original, but it's built in such a way that it's a bit like a um, curtain wall so that there, there may have been different openings behind, but we don't think so. We think that, I mean, these, I, we think that these have been altered at some point, but we don't have a record of, of when and what the shapes were previously. Your sketch shows more of a... Uh, on the front facade, yes. And then the third. Right, but then in the actual show, uh, uh, no, the, the, actual, the uh, proposal More should like show divided light, existing front elevation. Uh, let me get the light one and then the proposed. That would be the sheet just prior to that. DR 401 shows the proposal for the front. So there should be a logical evolution from the sketch. I guess I'm looking at the existing AMC. DR-401. Oh, there's the DR-401. That's the proposal. That's the, but that's existing. Uh, yes, I'm really sorry that has come up as existing and it should not say existing. But then, so in the proposal, are you, gonna, are you proposing these divided light windows? Or yes, or yes. Versus yes, I'm afraid that there is a, the, I'm sorry about that, the correction on sheet 401. View number one currently says existing, and that's wrong, I'm afraid. I should say proposed. I'm sorry for that confusion. Sorry, I didn't catch it either. <laughs> on, uh, on sheet DR401, which is the proposal, the proposed elevations, view one currently says existing, and I'm afraid that's wrong. It should say proposed. I'm sorry about that. But you're... Your sketch and what is in the neighborhood yeah. shows shows paired windows. Yeah, yeah. So it's, those instead those, of all these divided lights. Uh, yeah, the sketch did not show the divided lights. I, I suppose simply to to try and keep it readable at that scale. The scale is smaller, so I guess the sketch seemed more in keeping with what's existing from when I look at. The buildings next door. Yes, I can see that there is a logic to that. I think our thought was that because the building has divided lights on the other faces, that we would keep the divided lights on the facade. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that the windows adjacent, although the photograph isn't particularly clear on that one, I think there's a single divide. Is it on the one adjacent? It looks like two. What they do? Yeah, two over two. Yeah, two, over two. So I think we'd be happy to consider whether since that was yeah. more appropriate with the divided lights to match the other mm. faces of the building, or whether the existing the building, building. So that, that almost makes sense to do that rather than doing one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So. <coughs> the question about the divided lights there. Yeah. I think our our intention was to. <coughs> was to replicate the other windows on the building in terms of the division of the lights. Yeah. And using the existing openings. And the existing openings would remain the same, yes. Yeah. Is any of the siding going to be changed or is that going to remain the same? No, that's on remaining the, the same. On the yeah. front? Yes. Or yeah. actually all sides? Yeah, the proposal is not to change any of the, the surface. And uh, the only other alterations were the proposal for an additional window on the rear elevation, which is shown on DR 401. And the comparison with the, the existing one is EX 401. So those are the comparison views there. The existing building has a, a blank face at second floor, and the mm -hmm. proposal would be for the addition of a window in the kitchen area. Okay. There. Um, the existing views also shown on the photograph page. So there would be an addition of a window on, on, that, on that 
one there. Yeah, so here. Yeah. And here over here, up there. Mm -hmm. And this door exists. That existing door. It's going to continue. Yeah, but continue. Um, the two doors at the back of the two other units would actually go because the eye care would have offices in that area. Okay. And then there's one additional window, which is uh, shown on for DR402. Sorry, keep landing on that microphone. Um, and that is to a landing on the second floor just to get light into the back end of the landing hallway at second floor. So the comparison view there. And that's in the courtyard at the back, so you would not be able to see it unless you were in the courtyard. So there's the new window and the existing view is below. Okay, uh, just to... So we are replacing, getting rid of that door in the back? Uh, there is, yeah. Is this, okay, nope, I just, it wasn't on the overview cover letter, I don't know. Okay. Think. Yeah, the door, the door's at the back of the, yep. those two. Both of them. Yeah. Okay. It shows here, and it shows sort of a faint, yep. darkened Gotcha. Area. Thank you. It appears from the photo that you have a mix actually. The upper floor divided right to different than the lower floor. Yeah, there is a mixture in the existing, they're not all the same. Yeah, you've got two of the two lower and uh, <laughs> there's quite a few. Yeah, there's lots of lots of different patterns. The the original block of the building we think is that block there, so most of those are consistent patterns except for the oddball ones at the second floor and then it changes to a different pattern in what was at one point an extension to the rear. So this construction is different than that, and so there's, that's why the window ch windows change at that point. And then from floor to floor they change. And they well. change from floor to floor as well. Yeah. So are you matching the floor? Uh, well, the intent for these two windows was to match, so those are the two enlarged windows, yeah. and the intent was to match the other ones of similar size in that area. And, and divided lights. And the divided lights, because the ones next door are the same. Are the divided lights going to be true divided lights? They would probably be simulated divided lights with the uh, space the bars on the front on both sides with a spacer bar in between. Mm -hmm. so the, the, the dividers would show up on the outside. They would on yeah. both outside and inside, and the bar between would make it appear that it was straight through the glass, even though it wasn't. Can you talk about this? Yes. Uh, so on, step and yeah, on the um, looking at the facade study, the first sketch shows the existing building, uh, and the purpose of that compared to the next sketch was to show the change in the windows at second floor, but also to look at how we could alter the entrance of the, what are currently three shops to make it a bit more logical to be a single entity for the, for the eye care. So the, the entrance to shop number one and two would be maintained as an entrance, but only have one door rather than two. And there's a sketch that'll show that change. And then the third entrance, which would be into the, what's now the flower shop, um, that entrance would be closed. And I'll show you the sketch for that. So. That's the existing entrance to the wool shop and the nail salon. And there's an entrance on both sides of that little lobby. We would close that one with either a glass to match the shop front adjacent and then the paneling would be carried through. 
and that's what this sketch shows. So the so the door would be replaced by a glass panel here with wooden panel underneath to replicate the pattern going around the corner. The door on the opposite side would would be closed. Sorry, would be maintained as a door entrance to the eye care shop. And then the third entrance, which is currently at the the florist, there's a step up to it because there's a change in level. That shop is about six inches higher than the other two. So what we would do is to close that door in the same way that we closed the other one with a glass panel and a wood panel underneath and then to level up the steps and create probably a planter feature there just to give it a bit of logic so that it would make it clear that the entrance was the other side. Is that where the stairs from the second floor come out? The stairs for the second floor come out <coughs> just to the left of that entrance. So that's the third shop entrance, and that's the staircase up to the second floor where the apartments would be. You're missing your train. <laughs> <laughs> and are there entrances to the second floor on both the front of the building and the back of yes. the building? Yes, yeah. the entrance at the back. So the, that's the, that's the entrance to the staircase mm -hmm. upstairs mm -hmm. at the front, and then at the back. Actually, that photo doesn't show it, but it is on the elevation. It's actually inside the courtyard. So, sorry, I keep covering the microphone. Um, that, door, that door currently goes into the back of the first shop, and that would be maintained for going into the back of the eye care. Mm -hmm. The other two doors would be closed, and just to the right of that door is a staircase, which then goes upstairs. And that would be maintained as well. So that's actually on DR402. That's the, that's the existing door upstairs, and it would be maintained. So compare that to the, the existing. So the existing is below, and that door would be maintained. What's the... Uh Manufacturers, Marvin and Pella. Uh, for the windows? Yes. Yeah, the thought was to use Marvin. Um, for, uh, I think the in Integra series. Wood, the wood, wood, wood frame press. integrity? Um, it could be that, depending on what the council thought was best. We weren't sure what the owner would like to do. He's, he is cost conscious, so I, I think he'd probably prefer to use the, I think it's the Infinity one, is the uh, plastic inside and outside. But I think he'd be open to. It's only a few windows, so I'm sure he'd be open to. There are other windows that, for example, the ones at the back are already not all wood. Those, some of those are not all wood currently. Um, the ones on the front portion of the building are. You'll be happier with the performance of the wood. Yes, I know. For our better. integrity, and there's yeah. not a huge difference between that and the straight integrity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Talking about wood all tracks. So yeah, they, they're, they're both all tracks on the outside. Yeah. Yes. But they've had some issues with the straight all tracks. Expansion yeah. Yeah. When, you see okay. them, when they put them in, and two months later, you see daylight beside the uh, sash. I have those in my house. I haven't had that problem. All all tracks windows. Mm -hmm. But anyway. They've had runs that are Fine. better than others. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what everybody else, I am fairly inclined to appreciate this elevation of a one over one in comparison to the rendering of the whatever it is, a four over four for those windows up above and keeping sort of a language across all the buildings versus, because I don't feel like you get to see those, um, I don't know if they're four over four or what they are. Um, I guess they're six over six. Um, I guess it makes more sense to me. This sketch makes more sense to me than the um, what page is it? Dr. Uh, the elevator would be Dr. Four hundred one, I think. Yeah, Dr. Four hundred one. I guess I would like to hear from. Mm. Anybody else around the table what they think about that? 
Yeah, I like the consistency across the front of the building. The building to the left, the Miller building, is actually a two over two. Yes, I think I was yeah. going to say the photograph doesn't, I think, show you the. And then the old Lobster Pot building, which is the Mackey building yeah. now. Those have been replaced some time ago. Yeah. But those are, I believe, they're one over ones. Mm -hmm. I think it is. Like, I think it is. I do see the. The two I, over two. I'm going to the one over one because they're simple and anything else is speculative anyway. Mm -hmm. Unless we have an historic photograph. And Steve said that it used to be just evenly spaced, but I can't remember what now. I'll look it up. But I do a photograph of the one from late 1800s. Okay. Do you have a cutout shot of the doors? Yeah, I'm going to do I don't have a cut sheet on the doors. Did you mean windows? No. I'm sorry. No. Are any of the doors being replaced with newer doors? Uh, that hasn't been discussed at the moment. As far as I'm aware, the doors would remain. Okay. Just getting rid of doors. Yes. Yeah, just removing yeah. the doors. Removing some, but not replacing yeah. the other ones. I'll take those photographs up, and then you can. We could do, you know, give them an option of using two over two or one over one. Pull up a photograph, and then he can, they can decide choose, if that sounds. Mm -hmm. But good. I feel like that would be feel it's, nicer. It's more consistent with the buildings on both sides in terms of compatibility with neighbors. Yeah. And it's built about the same time, even though it had a, a renovation done probably in the 30s or 40s mm -hmm. at some point. Be my guess. I would guess so that. Uh, Windows, uh, second floor windows that are there, are probably from the 50s or 60s. Uh, it feels like be, to me. No, you're probably right. Probably 50s or 60s. They, they saw a lot of those windows that had sort of the center Fixed panel, fixed center panel with the casements yeah. on the side. I, I mean, I if you don't know what your what exactly what's uh, what it should be, I'm usually in favor of doing the simplest thing, which would be just be one over one. anticipate the parking? Um, I believe that the property has 18 spaces at the back and some of those would be reserved for the flats above but also some would be for the eye care and we don't yet have a division of those spaces. If that was something you'd want, I'm, we can ask the owner to, to look at that. When you say reserved for the eye care, you mean the employees I, or the I patients? Think, I think possibly both but I'm not quite sure what his intention is. Um, there's no, I mean, that's one of the things that we'll be dealing with in the administrative permit, but there's, it's in UC1, there's no minimum parking requirements. Is there going to be any um, unification of the awning themes or are the awnings? Um, well, the intention was that we were going to look at that in a, at a second round and bring it a second uh, as, a, as a separate issue because he wasn't quite sure whether what he wanted to do with the awnings and how he wanted to deal with that. This sketch shows a possible way forward. Yeah. And he was positive about the sketch but wanted to explore more options. So the idea was to present that again yeah. separately. To maybe this, maybe to with look. signage. Yes, with signage. So this is sort of structural issues here and then yep. other things separately set. It would be nice to along. see some unification of those awnings. Yeah. Possible. yeah. Yeah, I think at this point the intention was to do the structural, practical, and to make everything read more as a unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. Any other comments, questions, suggestions? Color will be the same? Yes. Okay. Any other exterior, any lighting changes in lighting or? Uh, we haven't discussed lots of detail in terms of the lighting, so we could perhaps bring that back when we come back with the follow-on discussion about awnings and so on. Okay. I don't know if you had any 
proposals for is what's the lighting that's that would become your main entrance. You have the panels straight ahead. Is there an overhead light that shines shines down, or do you mean at the entrance area for the yes the front at the proposed entrance right here? Yes, I, I actually I'm not <coughs> sure what the current lighting situation is there, um, and I, we haven't discussed a proposal yet for the for the lighting. I'm afraid. Okay. No, I didn't know if you wanted. If you were planning on coming back anyway, that's fine. Otherwise, we could. Could put some overhead cans with a down downcast flood okay. in both locations. If we, we can add that in, and again, we don't know what's there. Yes. If there's something already there, there's no need to make any application yes. for a change. I'm afraid I don't actually know the details of that. I'll have to. Okay. We can easily find out, and we'll perhaps discuss it when we come back the next time. That might be the easiest thing to do, I suppose. And then any lighting in the back. Yeah. As, as well, okay. whether it be an entrance lighting over an entrance way or some lighting in the parking area or, or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then any signage you might have yeah. for directing patients to parking, or I'm not sure what your parking plan is. So any additional utility changes in utilities or signage? Yes. Okay. I'm assuming the signage will be interior on the glass, or will there be anything? There's really not a sign band overhead above the awnings. Uh, or, would there, or would there be a sign on that panel next to your entryway? I, again, I'm afraid we haven't discussed okay. the sign. Again, I'm just yeah. throwing out things to include on your next yes. visit. Yeah, I will. Anything else? Otherwise, we can go through okay. a set of criteria that we yep. need to go through. Evaluation criteria number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed projects in the historic district are involved in historic structure acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of the proposed landscaping, non proposed. Uh, add something with your planter and the next time too you were talking about that Okay. in the front. You can sort of throw all that in at the same time. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no changes proposed in this application. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. And then again, the option was that the replacement windows on the front of the building may be one over one or two over two at your discretion for historical integrity. And again, I'll pull up the okay. photo and yeah, take a look at it. That's see useful to see. Did you want to put anything in there about the wood frame windows or not? Or you don't really care? I just knew it was, There's like, no discussed. Dis it was discussed, so I didn't okay. know if that was something that you guys had and again, limited I'll say or not. The replacement windows. Right. And again, the replacement windows, you can again, you can use either the just straight integrity or the wood frame integrity. Okay. Thank you. And all in favor of the application is proposed. Raise your hand. Steve, will we see it again before, before they go forward when he comes back? Does he come back to us? or? To the board. Yes, he would come back with the, the additional items on yeah. it. Okay. Any changes in lighting, okay. uh, the
planter box, whatever that yes, may I've be. Yes, I've got a, a list of okay. follow-on items. Yeah, that'll be a separate a separate administrative permit that comes here for your review and then goes back to our office to have the actual permit issued. I'm the new guys. <laughs> and I'll get you to I'll get you to sign your name there, and then maybe just above it, print it so they have it for the for the record. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Good luck with your project. Thank you. You're in Black River Design's offices upstairs? Yes. Next building over? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. The next application is for 25 East State Street. Hi, Paul. Introduce yourself. Paul Somerset. I own 25 East State Street and 3 Miles Court and 27 East State Street over there. And the barber shop. Okay. Good. And describe your project. Uh, the project is the repainting of 25 East State Street. And uh, I was not, I will apologize that I did not know that I had to get design review for the painting. So um, the, paint, the, the situation was that I tried to get it painted last summer and I tried to get it painted this summer. I talked to six people on the phone and nobody had even come by to get a bid and it just kept going and going and going and I couldn't find a painter and then all of a sudden somebody came by and said I'll paint your house. So it kind of went up very quickly after that. So the proposed um, colors were going to be all I really wanted to do was raise the tone up one notch I had this um, existing kind of gray green on there uh, I have a couple of the old pictures um, on my iPad I didn't have time to print them out that's kind of the old gray green of, mm -hmm. the, of the building behind the one that's all wood and then what we went to was a slightly is a uh, nature green. But this is the word, what it is now. Yes, and that is uh, what it is. Is that what it this is? This is, no, is the 2012. The one. This is a 2012 screen that's capture. Old, yeah. This is the old look. That's the old color. Yeah. Okay. And then the was it the 158C3, the nurture nurture green that you went to? Yeah. So that's that. Except is, our printout is not as that's good. That's the picture of what it is yeah. now. Okay. All right. So this is from our color copier, which doesn't show quite as well as that. You're doing the same pattern of color All of it. Yeah, we changed the red trim to a dark blue, and but the cream remained the same. So it, uh, and that's it. You can pass that around. That's what it is now. It's a three-color paint job. It's, you know, it's exactly what I had on there before. I did change the red trim to a blue, but all the. Uh, blue is where all the red was, and all the cream is where all the cream was, and the green base color, I would say, went up one tone level. Well, thank you for keeping the architectural details painted similarly. As a matter of fact, I'm turning a, one of the little corbels came off on, in the back, and I'm hand turning another one over at my dad's wood shop. We'll go back up in the spring. So I do like the historical building. That's why I bought it. And I've really tried very hard, both inside and out, to maintain the historical loveliness of it. This would be a much more uncomfortable meeting if you hadn't <laughs> <laughs> maintained some of those. Well, we really try. I mean, if you guys have been in the barbershop, you know that it's gone back to the original, you know, the original lath and plaster and the tin ceiling, and it's, it really represents kind of the era of what it was. We saved the building originally. I mean, the whole foundation was crumbling in the back corner. We spent a lot of time and money putting that back in and drying the basement out and really kind of saving the old, overall water sogginess of the building. And just, you know, so I really am. I, I don't. I do apologize. I didn't. talk to all my neighbors so but the process goes like it always goes 
I put the patches of the paint up on the side of the building. They were there for several weeks. I talked to customers, I talked to friends, I talked to neighbors, I talked to everybody else. Actually, the only people who really live within that core or dock whose house is fairly bright purple. And, you know, I talked to her, she liked the colors. I talked to the doctors in the back. They actually picked the color out, the green they liked, which was the lowest tone of all the greens I had up there. I don't know, I talked to a lot of people. So I own the business in the building too. I don't really have any vested interest in painting it or not just color the decision. What did what ended up going in the back of the first floor where the uh, bar was? It's mean it. I am heading towards what I would like to call semi-retirement, and I just decided not to open up another business. So it's remaining a it is remaining a small apartment, which is still not undone, but it's it's unchanged. So, okay, yeah. and it's it's unchanged. We finished and, the insulation yeah. project, and all of my tools are still in there, and I'm gonna I got to put in. I was excited for the bar. I, <laughs> everybody was. And I, when I was back there doing the, the insulation project, and I just realized that I didn't want to get back into that business. So. Get trimmed and looped all in the same building. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly that's the new and incoming thing. <laughs> Questions, comments, suggestions from anyone? Nice. Okay. <laughs> Done, right? <laughs> Done. Okay. And I just for clarification, so that 27 East State Street isn't in the new downtown core, and 25 is. Well, the, the design review overlay design. district, and it wasn't the, the district boundaries didn't change in 2018. Okay. But yeah, 25 is in. 27, 27 is, is out. out. Okay. So just you're just you happen to own two properties right All next right. to each other on either side of the line. All right. Good. I'm good. Do I have to sign in? Yeah, we got to go through the whole okay. right. thing. And again, I'll just read the criteria, okay. which is the same as you heard for the last project. Preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure. Uh, we call it preservation acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, none proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no change. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application, raise your hand. Sign this one okay. the lower left above my name. Oh. Oh. They off of the pen. They did. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, have enough people here to take care of all the minutes we've got. Let's, let's do that after we get done with the. With the okay. These guys have been waiting. So. Sure. I'm okay with that. Okay. Uh, so, in deal with our rules of procedure after, we can bump those if we need to. We'll bump seven and eight. To after. Okay. So we're up to number nine for now. Yep. Review of the new design review regulations. Anybody interested, come forward and sit at the table. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have to grab more chairs. Bring them up. Sorry. I couldn't, I wasn't sure how many of you were going to show. And you must feel like deja vu. <laughs> Do any of you need 
clean copies. Yes. Jenna, you didn't bring your notebook. No, she's at home right now. And do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Jamie Duggan. I'm Lily Fournier. Jenna Lapachinsky. Elizabeth Peebles. Okay. We'll leave no. it open. I, okay. Um, I'll try. I'll give it a shot. To you to give it a shot. <clears throat> um, so we have been working on a revision to the design review um, policy and procedures, uh, focusing first on the ordinance in response to uh, some feedback that came out of the proposed changes back when the, uh, was it a year or two ago now? Started in 2016. 2016. Went through a whole grant cycle, so two years Okay. <laughs> uh, so this is part of um, a number of goals that the HP Commission identified, the first being to um, uh, work on the process to make it a bit more um, um, well, yeah, uh, transparent. I'm just I'm blanking on the word, uh, but uh, easier to uh, to provide some uh, measures for more administrative uh, opportunities, so that, uh, for example, perhaps the last project, which was paint, could be handled administratively rather than having to go through the full process. Um, and to provide, um, I think, it also with some feedback, we have some other goals, but we thought it was important first to uh, tighten up the process and um, make it a little bit more predictable uh, and have some of these options that wouldn't require everything to go through a full, a full on review process where appropriate. I think this is in response to a couple of things. One was the public outcry, which I will not characterize, about objections to design review. That kind of stimulated a lot of interest in doing something with design review. And when you then say the public outcry, we're talking about Cliff Street? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, the Planning Commission did some changes to the design review stuff that didn't meet the Secretary of Interior standards. And somehow the Historic Preservation Commission got charged with making the rules. And we've really worked hard at it. And uh, I think it, I think it's a, it's a good set of rules uh, at, at this point. I mean, I, I think it's not complete. I mean, the Planning Commission has to approve it. Uh, we want you guys to be fully on board with it. Uh, and certainly welcome any suggestion for ch changes that would make things clearer and easier for design review, and in the end, the city council has to approve it. So we've yeah. slogged for a while. Now we've got a no, I think few it's more steps, and uh, I plan to have a, a, a meeting with um, uh, what's her name, the chair of the planning commission, Leslie, Leslie Wells, uh, and talk about that after this meeting. I couldn't meet with her over the holidays. I was going to meet. Uh, and then we'll probably go to the Planning Commission at that point and have a similar meeting to this one. So we're a long ways, and this is really a, uh, a, a draft uh, to give people things to comment. And, and there's a couple of things that we've done that I think are in Meredith's health as a city attorney. No, no, and I said, oh, and, and, and I thought you said ass. I'm like, no, wait, no. That whole issue that I got so upset about that uh, the major buildings in town were not covered by design review, according to an opinion that that uh, Gwen Hallsmith got, and now I think Mary has done a great job of writing that in, so those projects do come to design review for a look at the things that we can review, some things we can't do. So I think that's, a, that's kind of a major change in, 
in process, and then our recommendations go on to the development review board. So, and I, I think another thing just uh, to point out is that, as I said, this is part of a first step, and I think the next step that we've identified is updating information on the design guidelines, and so it would essentially be updating cityscape in, in, in many ways to provide additional guidance to folks on how to navigate through the process and what type of things they would anticipate, for example, talking to you folks and then as well at the development review board. So um, this is really the first step though, is getting um, you know, the, the, the policy in a good place that everyone can feel comfortable with and then we can start talking about how that, uh, kind of getting to the issue of parity that folks have been complaining about that some folks are in the district and not under design review. Some folks are not in the district, the historic district. Yeah, uh, the, the other thing we affect? haven't done yet, and I, I think we all agreed that getting the, the rules established, or at least reasonably established, before we set the boundaries for the district. So yeah. we've got to wait. We, we had a, a number of discussions about how it would be difficult for um, residents and property owners to comment on updating the boundary without knowing what would be in the new language of design review. And just, I had a discussion just today with Mike Miller. When you're looking at this, the parts about view sheds is pretty general. There's, there's not a lot in there. And so one thought on that, and it sort of goes along with, with the designing the new district is that here you're on, on the view sheds issue you're going to want to sort of make baby steps and just pick a couple of very specific view sheds like oh the dome you don't want to impinge on views of the dome later after doing maybe a really detailed view shed analysis that could then be elaborated on but it's the same with the the current overlay district right now trying to mess with that doesn't really make sense because you need to get a lot more data on that first to then be able to try and back up those kind of changes that people are going to have issues with. But getting getting the process really laid out and some of the other more detailed standards that HPC has worked really hard on in here, making sure we're all on board with those um, and making them workable the um, is the first end step. end is right over the horizon. <laughs> of the and first step. Hill. Of the first step, yes. <laughs> <Another> <laughs> <rise. laughs> so since you all are the ones that implement this, you know, what were some of your thoughts? I, I don't know how you want to proceed uh, with this. I mean, we could kind of go through it section by section quickly. Mm -hmm. Not every word because We've done that. I want to be home before midnight. <laughs> well, that and I've got a I've got like an every word workability analysis from Mike over two and a half hours this afternoon. So if you just have some sections where you go, I don't know if this really works to administer. I'll let you know if I've already yeah, talked about it with Mike, and I may be able to do a rewrite already. <laughs> but knowing what your what your chance to look at. <laughs> yeah. yeah, knowing what your what your thoughts are on it. Yeah. And you know, sections that you think don't make sense would be helpful and, for everybody. And, anything or things you really like. You can send to Meredith by email too if you yep. have yes, second thoughts. We, was we, there anything that jumped out though as far as it didn't seem drastically different in terms of administration, like the committee's role. Mm -hmm. Yep, I, I think exactly. The, the so. checklist is probably gonna be longer. Yeah. There it, was yeah. like new design standards. But other, but administratively, it didn't seem. I think fewer projects different. would be coming before you as a group, and things like paint colors would be approved by the just administratively, or they wouldn't come at all. They wouldn't come at all. Okay. Well, and then there's some things like if somebody came to you previously for a whole big project, and then they, you know change there's a couple things in here where if they come back for some really inky dinky change I might be able to approve that yes without the whole thing having to come back to you again mm -hmm. yeah, which yeah, makes yeah. a lot there was very specific 
items in there. Um, so looking over those to make sure they aren't they aren't something that you want to have come back to you. In one of our public outreach meetings, we got some very positive feedback about having a laid out list about activities that are considered exempt. Um, so to understand that you know certain things, you don't have to bring it forward. You can look at the the rules and read through it and understand it and know where the priorities are in terms of front and rear um, and extent of changes. One question that some some people who come when I mean, obviously some of the rules are changing and it'll be a little more relaxed, but there's some people who come and gotten some advice. I mean, we have built builders, architects on the board, and some people have seen that as a fairly valuable resource. And a couple of people in particular have saved thousands of dollars on their project mm -hmm. and ended up with a better plan at the suggestion of a couple of architects and people on the board in the past. And they've been very happy with it. And in that sense, hopefully we are seen as a, as a resource. And I would wouldn't mind if there was a way that if somebody wanted to come and either for administrative approval on something or if they wanted some input from people on the committee mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, that there's a way to I'm not sure if it was the waiving a fee or making it easier just to come to get some input from people here I mean with it with Eric's expertise on the historic preservation architects and people read there's a lot of resources here on the, on the committee uh, so in, <laughs> in section 2201.g on page three um, the first paragraph it does call out specifically applicants are encouraged to consult with the design review committee or for technical assistance with implementing uh, repair and maintenance practices and so they could still request to come before you, even if they're not required to. Okay. Well, and what we could, I mean, we could, I could talk to Audra. We have to, we would have to probably have something in the fee schedule that specifically says we can bring it here without a fee. Changing the fee schedule okay. requires and something. Again, but I'm we just can, yeah. Trying to figure out a yep. way to make that work. No, yeah, yeah, and to make that, so that easier somebody, for them. I think that's something I noticed when I reread it uh, this afternoon. It, it, that, that wasn't specifically in there and I know there's a lot of people John Anderson was very enthusiastic about that Kim Cheney was and I yeah. think a lot of people are that, that uh, are applicants yeah having somehow making sure that it's clear that there's a fee waiver for the informal review if we yeah. can, especially if it's something where mm -hmm. I'm not going through my whole regular process and we just put I, together I, what they have and come here I think our first application tonight could have been an informal review because they really didn't have all the information yeah but that could have been an informal review and I think the informal review to just make mm. sure there's nothing no big deal here yeah except that they wanted to make those changes yeah so for us to issue the permit so that they can make those changes and do the change of use we kind of need your input on the structural okay. changes and they'll probably need a lot of that information in, a couple in, in, in order to get bids for Doing oh, yeah. the actual work on yeah. the projects. So Sorry. But yes, <laughs> informal review where it does, I think. So again, that just makes sense. A, yep. a mechanism for doing that and maybe a, re a reduced or no fee to make, to encourage people to do that if they want some, mm -hmm. want some help with the project. Are we thinking of expanding or contracting the boundaries of which we uh, have jurisdiction over? Expanding or, I didn't hear what you said, Ben. Expanding uh, or applying I, logic. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's still a, a good, healthy objective. conversation around that. Uh, we know that there are varying opinions on, on that, on the status of that. And right now, uh, as I was saying earlier, there are properties that are within the National Register District that are not subject to design review. And um, not subject to design review because they're not. They're the outside of the, the design. The boundaries. Yeah. 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 Design review overlay district. The district instead of previous. The other option. Thing. But, uh, sorry to interrupt you. There's, um, there are also other areas that um, could be future historic districts. Our, our district is the largest contiguous district in the state. Um, so while. The national. 
the national historic district. district. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Versus so we have overlay. what six hundred. 660. 660 resources. Now, <laughs> Burlington has far more, but they're split up into smaller, uh, more discrete districts. So there's like eight and, or nine districts within bo Burlington. Both the state and the Fed said we can't expand this district anymore. Yes. The historic district. Right. But we district. can continue to survey and create other yeah. districts as appropriate or, you know, we've even talked through this conversation, is it appropriate to have the downtown be one discrete district? And then have some of the more residential neighborhoods, you know. So there's, so there's there's a discussion to have, and I think we're interested in the feedback on that. But um, uh, the hope would be that if this becomes a logical, predictable, uh, clear process, that increasing that overlay would not be as intimidating as it perhaps was a few years ago. Um, I think one of the other things, Ben, that we talked about is that there's a grant program, that certified local grant program, and that's how we funded part of this. Uh, but to actually make a plan of adding districts, I mean, some of the obvious ones are the Meadow, you know, College Street, and then there's all kinds of other additional districts that we could we could do, but to actually hire an architectural historian to go through and say, okay, this is, and do a rough outline of the district. And drawing boundaries, I mean, we had one person that wanted their building in the district, but it wasn't, because it's really hard to tell, like uh, uh, the oh, barber that was in here. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a, There's nothing different between those two buildings other than an imaginary line <laughs> right. that goes between Right, them. and, and well, no. that's going to be to Mont Bancur until you get the whole thing. Yeah. There's just there's no definable, clear boundaries. I think that there could be definable, clear boundaries. And one of the things that we've talked about is for the design review overlay district, one option would be to follow some of the new neighborhood lines yep, neighborhood. that were a part of the zoning update so that um, in terms of city administration and understanding of the neighborhoods could be linked to that. Yeah, but we'd need to do, there would need to be a survey to see if that actually even makes sense. Mm -hmm. and, and it wouldn't necessarily have to be in addition to the National Register. Mm -hmm. it, can, okay. it can be the State Register the or districts. some other, or it yeah. can be a local designation. And other than Cliff Street, what sort of feedback are you getting from the community as far as wanting or not wanting? We had a public meeting that we got, I think we got a lot of positive feedback from people. Yep. Uh, I, I, I've heard both. I've heard folks, the Cliff Street, uh, you know, having not having an interest in that uh, designation. And as Eric said, some other folks who wish that the boundaries went another block over so that they could be included. I, I, and I think I, I, one I, I, of the parts, one of the things to our, our, one of our goals, I think, is to, um, help uh, remove some of the misperceptions about what what does the status mean and how does it affect people's property, commercial versus private, and those sort of things. Um, so uh, this, again, is I think it's part of a, what's going to be a, a long campaign for advocacy and education. Right. So much depends on the individual, the mm -hmm. individual owner of a property. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. they are happy to be in it just so they can use the committee as a resource to do their own project. Yeah. Sometimes they're just as happy because it helps the, the neighbor. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. One, one person the neighboring that, property. that, that, that uh, talked, well, what are we doing wrong with our house? I mean, they did, a, they did a nice job of painting it. They did nice stuff. You know, are you telling me we're doing something wrong because we didn't go to the designer? Not at all. A lot of people are doing really nice things with houses. And, in Montpelier, but you don't want the person moving in next door, and that's the. And I, I'll guarantee you that no matter what is done in either terms of district boundaries or listings on the National Register, somebody's going to find problems with it. Uh, there's going to be a certain contingency that just doesn't want to be regulated. Period. And they think the feds are going to take their building if it goes on the National Register. All the there's all kinds of misperceptions out there. I think um, one of the 
the things that I heard was people being unsure of what might happen with the update mm -hmm. of will it will it cost me more money that's always a question um, but you know once we kind of talked through some of the issues they were like that's you know that seems reasonable because um, we also heard a lot of people talking about concern about what their neighbors might do um, so there's there's interest in I think in more design review as long as it's predictable and understandable um, I, I, I don't and think not financially burdensome. In, 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 I don't think that there many people have problems with design review in the downtown area. You know, when you get out in the neighborhoods, Cliff Street being the obvious one, uh, the people are, don't like it. You know, for I think most often based on misinformation. But, uh, uh, but interestingly, some those are actually some of the more visible properties because of their proximity up the hill. So Speaking there's a future. balance. There's a balance to to that, and I think one of the goals, though, would be that folks feel that um, there's a sense of parity in what's happening with that. And I don't That's think right. that exists currently, but um, it's a multi-step process. Well, you don't think parity exists, or you don't think people understand feel like there's parity? Both. Yep. We we've, we've discussed everything, including the boundaries be the city. <laughs> uh, you know that parity it's fair that was an outside suggestion <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I think it's just one of the it's going to be tough selecting the boundaries the easiest course is to make them concurrent with the National Register but that's the easiest well, solution that, that's also if you're concerned mostly with historic versus yes. historic and design that, of I, I mean, new from, development I mean, from sort of an administrative standpoint the boundaries are on the buildings are described in there so that you know there's a real basis for for doing that and I mean almost everything I think design review does with the exception of new hotels and parking garages <laughs> is is on historic buildings and transit centers and um, what was going to be where M&M &M is and yeah. uh, I mean I feel like there's a lot of buildings that are not necessarily historic that we're commenting on. And so, I think yeah. that that's actually really important. For me, that's more important than the yeah. historic stuff. Like, I feel like the, the taking a look at our infill development yeah. and making sure that the buildings are okay. are interesting and well-crafted yeah. and well and beautiful and sort of thought about, that is more important to me than the historic part of it. Well, and you're going to... We talk um, at the beginning of this process, the state has established two different types of design review districts. One is what we had been, which is a traditional design review overlay district, which is looking at everything from historic to new and growth and expansion and all of that. But they also have the option of doing a historic review district, which is very much more focused on kind of keeping that historic district intact as is um, and we decided that we wanted to stick with what the city has traditionally had which is the design review which does consider new development and how does it fit in and how does it allow for some change and growth while still preserving the character of the community yeah um, so hopefully this does that but we're also a, a commission of historic people so if you guys have thoughts about yeah. the new well, infill stuff that we wrote, well, definitely if, share. if any of you want to go to another meeting this week, <laughs> uh, <laughs> tomorrow night at Christ Church at 7 o'clock, there's going to be a, a discussion of sort of the development potentials on, on State Street. That includes uh, moving the Thrush Building forward, it, it includes work on Christ Church. Uh, there'll be some discussion about the wayfinding, and the city has a streetscape, a grant to do a streetscape planning, which, you know, those things, those kind of street furniture or street design is really important in terms of the, the district. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's Christchurch in the sanctuary.
and this meeting is organized. Uh, David Sheets uh, was key. The people from Christ Church, uh, probably, I participated, but. I wish they'd done the whole downtown rather than just State Street. But there's a lot going on on State Street. I um, mean, the issue of the hotel and all of that, and what's going to happen with the, uh, where uh, the gas station was. I think there's a lot of buildings in infill development that happens, especially yeah. recently. Well, that was a lot of the changes to the 2018 regulations were to allow that. That's what you're going to see, be, be seeing more of that especially based on the subdivision permits they've been getting. But it would, it would really be nice if they could find a way to move the Thrush building back up on the street where it used to be and uh, then do, do it, whatever they do behind is less sensitive to the, to the streetscape. But so, So when you guys looked through these, did were there any sections that kind of caught your eye of, ooh, not sure how that's going to work, or um, any any concerns that should be addressed before it goes before planning commission? And if you really didn't have a chance to look through it, you can also send me comments. <laughs> <laughs> did Mike have concerns with the workability thing this afternoon? Like I said, I met with him two and a half, for two and a half hours. Okay. <laughs> I have a, a lot of it. A lot of it was just moving stuff around mm -hmm. so that we could administer it better, and so that we can create um, recommendation forms that make more sense and write. Because we'll have to, if it's that mu this much longer, there may have to be actual written decisions that, like for our administrative decisions, that have more detail in the design review section. Mm -hmm. So um, there weren't too many. Oh, this isn't going to work things. Most of it was just reorganizing a bit so that we could administer it better. So a lot of those changes I think we're just going to make send to you guys to look at. And then some of them are discussion points. Well, we could have another meeting, joint meeting, if one Meredith sends that out. If, if people want, your... but it can also be a comments thing, yeah, however you want to do it. Do it. Um, and it, it, it would be nice to be able to incorporate comments and changes that people have while I'm making a, doing a revision and be able to pull it all together at one time. Yeah, since the design review, which is going to be the one that deals with this, <laughs> yeah. sort yeah. of preservation commission well, is done with it. Are there I, I, particular sections that you want us to look at? Like, I mean, you know, <laughs> um, I, so, 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 but so are there like... Exempt probably. Yeah, probably. So the I'm subsection H. Any of those. Yeah, exempt development. Um, the sec subsection K, administrative review, things that I can approve without it even coming to design review. Um, hold on, hold on. Hold yep, on. those are two big ones. Exempt is on page three. Yeah, yep. I got that. Subsection and H. And then five. five. Yep, page five, subsection K. Administrative yeah. review. It's so nice to have subsections now. <laughs> we were like subsection X for two years. <laughs> um, the uh, the other thing is, I think is we've got a section at the end on definitions. Mm -hmm. Good uh, look on that. Mm -hmm. Any additions we have, we we sort of did didn't try to define everything and add a dictionary, but just define the the, the words that were particularly related to the. Yep. And then just be aware that there, is, there are specific design standards that apply to alterations and additions to current buildings versus standards for new construction. So this is the starting you know, halfway down page 7 versus halfway down page 9. There's different, so that would be like two different recommendation forms. You get one kind of recommendation form if you're dealing with a, a, an addition or change, and then one type of recommendation form for new buildings. Yeah, Sarah McShane helped with this talk a lot. She did a lot of this before I came yeah, on. She, 
she'd been working with us before Meredith came on. So. Yeah, I think those are probably the biggies for those are sort of the big picture changes. I mean, many of these things are already addressed, but only in a more generic and a general way. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, in the existing uh, criteria, they talk about compatibility mm -hmm. with adjacent properties and other properties of the district. That's pretty broad. That encompasses a lot of these things that, like, you know, materials, roof shape, things, architectural features. So, again, it's, not, it's nice to be familiar with the details so that you can address those in terms of compatibility, which is one of the criteria. Yeah. And I think some of that laying it all out is for that whole transparency, that so that when people are coming yes. in with their application, they can look at it and go, what are we really, what are they actually looking at? Mm -hmm. And be able to figure it out so they, and also that way they go, oh, wait, I do have to apply. Yes. I, I do have to go to design yeah. review for this issue, because mm -hmm. it's in there. We, we also, I think, yeah. looked at it uh, with the idea of, uh, Defending decisions in court, mm -hmm. you know, because there have been very many that, that the well, one of them not on Cliff Street, but it's on. Uh, I can't remember. That, that would have been before me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're vinyl looking at me. Siding, vinyl siding, oh. vinyl siding, and windows change. I can't remember the uh, the guy's name. I see him around town every once in a while, but uh, just to kind of so that our our decisions are defensible give you guys some words to, to back up anybody that might challenge what you are already practicing, um, but just so that it's spelled out in the regulation. And this is, I should know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyhow. Specific to Montpelier more than it is like a, a general document? Mm -hmm. or yep. mm -hmm. we. I uh, used a number of other municipalities uh, for uh, as reference, mm -hmm. and we did a like don't like as we read through different cities regulations. I, th I think a, a big part of this is the kind of guidance piece of it. This is the regulatory part. Sort of the other foot is the guidance piece, and, and uh, Shelburne has a very detailed guidance piece. Uh, so that's our next project. Maybe I'll retire before that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> you could be an honorary member at the very least. Oh. <laughs> Please. The, the other, th so. other thing that's kind of happening I, that I think is really good is the Montpelier Heritage Group is sort of reforming. Uh, I was going to try to get that to happen, but happening without me which is fantastic <laughs> so the, the National Park Service's guidance about um, design review in historic districts is that you start with the kind of basics of what are the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation but then you really need to expand and customize it for the specifics of your local community um, because neighborhoods and development patterns change what what are your priorities um, and so I think that's a little bit of what we try to do yeah this is really based on the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation and what we've done so and so with the last groups that, that we're doing now so you know that, that I don't think there's going to be a great difference in the decisions that come out When people come in to fill out their applications, they don't see you, they see uh, Audra more often, don't they? Um, if it is, yeah, for, for administrative permits, yeah, if it's not something that's going to the DRB as well, then usually they see Audra. Um, um, you know, it, it, it depends. Generally, it's um, Audra that it has to tell somebody that they need to, this will have to go to design review, I guess is what I'm getting at. I wouldn't say that. Okay. Um, generally, it's Audra who would look at their application and say, if it's an administrative application, and say, you've got everything in here you need to have. So what's... I guess my question is the perception of the public when they're, when they're told that they mm -hmm. need to go to design review. Is that generally something that they're like, oh, God, 
you're killing oh, people? Oh, uh, <laughs> or is it like, it's, uh, it, it depends on, so some people are just like, uh, uh, especially if it's something that they have to go to design review and they have to go to DRB, then they get annoyed because it's, you know, extra hearings um, that hopefully we've spaced out, so that means two weeks in between the two, unless we're really trying to squish it. Um, but for your standard person who just, all they have to do is come here and then it's an administrative permit, it's usually not that big of a deal. Um, but they don't necessarily know everything that they have to give us. And especially with my learning curve, I don't always know all the questions to ask. As I've been working on these, it's helped, and as I've been sitting in these meetings, but at the very beginning, just as a person who was just coming in, I was in the same boat that the applicants were in, in trying to figure out all the things I had to find out that they needed to, to provide. So I can sort of see how somebody would be surprised at all the information that they need. You know, if it's somebody who does not have an architect with them or a general contractor doing it. Um, I mean, so, I guess, sorry. No, it's okay. I mean, we'll still need to explain it to them, but to be able to have something other than just that, like, you know, one and a half pages of design review standards to show them in some ways is better because we can point them to specific sections and give it to them that lays out what design review is really going to be looking at. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Or are you talking about changing? Mm, well, districts? no more. I'm not talking about any of those okay. things specifically more. I just feel like I do think that this is a valuable resource for oh, yeah. the city and community. And I do think that there is some like educational very quick educational things that could happen in mm -hmm. your office as to like why we exist. Oh, and, and we what do, we're doing. and we do, and we try and tell. And people who do start to complain, it's a sort of a selling point of, look, you're going to go there and you're going to get a panel of people who, who, do development, who who understand buildings, who are going to be able to give you advice. Well, and I also think that there's plenty of like photographs of our. I mean, the cool jewels building of like what it used to look like versus what it looks like now because somebody actually took the time to rip all yeah. of the terrible siding off and sort of like you're part of this larger fabric of like trying to create a community that has, you know, values in its mm -hmm. buildings and whether there is any part of this that is a front end, front end educational for mm -hmm. the person coming in. Get me some that. more time. To be able to put up displays in the office. Sure. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to push it. It's more just a question. Yeah. No. Oh no. Well, it's and that's you know, trying to. And we've talked about that in historic preservation committee meetings about trying to do that outreach. Yeah. And I think that the next step with coming up with some more design guideline material uh, help. You know how do how do these flesh out? Um, that there's a huge educational component to that because. You know, my recollection sitting around this table as a DRC member many years ago, that was, you know, that's exactly it. It's the, the, the process was not clear for some people, and therefore they would show up without everything needed, and oh, now i got to come back, what, in two weeks? And then that means I can't make the next DRB meeting, which means now all of a sudden I'm six weeks out and I could be done today if I had just known that. And so that's part of, I think, again, the, the education and advocacy that can help front load all of this so that it's not so intimidating and it's, it's, it's again, we keep using those, the words predictable and um, clear. Yeah, and some of the material and we will why. produce like, later, I think, is... Like a lot of is, people don't get it. That they, they see their project in this very narrow scope that's mm -hmm. sort of like about them, but don't mm -hmm. realize that you know, building's been around for a long time, and it's going to be around for a lot longer after they're gone. Mm -hmm. And I like, sort of see how it fits into the. But I, I mean, I think most people come to it and just like, oh God, this is so onerous on me to have to deal with this thing. Well, and, um, hopefully, when you read the little intro section of these regulations, we tried to put a lot of the not visuals, but the kind of the concept and the reason why we do this yeah. you know why is the city important and why is design review important I think some vision is clearly that I, I, I I'd don't know appreciate if you read yes you can't put those in the regulations <laughs> but I mean we already have a few design guidelines that are available on I think they're on your website right yeah. uh, you know about dealing with you know how, what's the way to approach windows what's the way to approach other elements roofing <laughs> or, uh, porches and 
those can be enhanced and those I think can be, you know, uh, that can all be expanded to include oh, stuff that's discussed here. So kind of how the rubber hits the road or hammer hits the road. And, and uh, <laughs> read this purposes and declaration because that really firmly establishes this as policy of the city mm -hmm. by the city council. Oh, we put words in their mouths, but we, we uh, so I th it's, it's important to us because that really establishes the framework that makes a lot of the other stuff defensible. One quick question when people are buying properties in town, mm -hmm. the realtors tell them that they're on the National Register or they're in a design review district so that if you're, you know, you're buying a house and you're going to fix it all up, that you need to get, you know, approvals for certain things. I've, I've had realtors ask me um, how that all gets transferred through. I'm not really sure. I think um, it's, but it's part of the should be doing their due diligence yeah, yeah. to inform their clients that, of yeah. any requirements yeah. they yeah. may so, be So, But that all, that all comes, and we get those questions. <laughs> um, I believe it would require, I know other states have state laws for realtors that say they have to disclose things like design review overlay districts, but I don't believe Vermont has that. Yeah, and that, that's, that's something I don't think we could do anything about. Mm -mm. Uh, and no, we can encourage and promote yeah. that, the benefits mm -hmm. of that. But that's, I think that's they, the they have to divulge that. everything else, whether yeah. you know, you've got a septic or sewer system yeah. or whether yeah. you've got... Yeah, so I, Yes. Asbestos, or I mean, there's a, a little bit of I think that's writing, a, list, writing a, a letter to your legislator. Yeah. They don't know. Because <laughs> I don't know that Montpelier has the authority to do a local they, rule like that. Supposed Over to realtors? No, I don't think yeah. Montpelier has any local realtor ordinance. That's mm -hmm. all state level. Mm -hmm. Is there a brochure or something that's created that can be distributed to realtors oh. to, you know? To hand to a client who's purchasing something that we could do that. I think it might come after redoing the application forms, <laughs> <laughs> but I will put that on the list because I think that's a great idea. Just an informational to yeah. Well, and not even just to realtors. That's just anybody coming I, in. I think what we can maybe do yeah. when this gets further along mm -hmm. or gets ad adopted, probably is just. The city could send a letter to all the realtors that mm. in town, just saying here, you know, there 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 is a new design review district. Uh, here's the information about it. Here's where you can get more. Yeah, but also just a general design review overlay district handout that could yeah. be sent both to realtors and to give to people who are interested. You know, and anybody who has property right. in that district. Steve, are you a realtor? No. <laughs> I, I don't need, any, you might have don't need anything else to do. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but realtors can be very useful. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a bunch of years ago, there was you know, some contact in a presentation at one of the realtors' meetings about historic preservation. I, I didn't do it, so, but. Uh, well, some some realtors actually see you know an historic building as a benefit because the, you know there's a lot of character yeah. and they people who appreciate that are, are frequently willing to pay more for it, which obviously the realtor is very interested in. <laughs> so if the you know if the building has historic character and has a lot of you know, unique features to it, okay. it can be an asset in a sale. And maybe they would describe it as something other than colonial. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, they have at least a seven percent interest in it, right? right. They have seven percent six. six. <laughs> Any other suggestions or clarifications that I think it would be great before this goes before the Planning Commission, and I don't know if this is possible with the timing, because I don't know what the timing is, if after you all have a chance to look at it, you could maybe, if you feel comfortable, jointly support it um, with the HPC um, as before it goes to the Planning Commission. Because I think one of their first feedback is going to be, how does the Design Review Committee feel about this? 
Well, basically, a lot of the proposed changes lightens the load for the committee. And a lot of the things that can be administratively approved, I mean, the paint job that we just reviewed, according to this, could have been administratively approved. Is there anything in here about something like that situation, though, where somebody has already done something and coming back in a retroactive uh, I don't scenario. think we talked about after the fact in the bag. I, I think that's just dealt with, I mean, under the big picture zoning regulations, you, if it's, if it's, if they were supposed to get a permit for it, they didn't, then it's an enforcement issue where I go, and that's what happened here, is I go to them and say, you need a permit for this, and they come and really, you guys have the authority to say, no, we don't approve of it, and he has to repaint his house. And it's just that's, it, it, if it's retroactive, it's retroactive, which means you're reviewing it as if it hasn't actually been done. That's nasty. We don't want people to do that. Well, which is also why we want them to come in and get a permit before they yeah. do the work. Right. But we're also just advisory. Yeah, but, but you, right, you're advisory. But, but it comes through. We don't have to repay their house. Well, right, but if it was something where you really say we don't, we don't approve of whatever it was, the zoning administrator can tell them they have to take the work out. And I think to Hannah's point, though, and something that we experienced in the past is that hopefully this provides mm -hmm. decisions that are more defensible. Yeah. Because it's there's there's more content here, there's there's more clarity in what it is what needs to happen and how it's evaluated. And I don't know that that was always the case in the past. And so I remember a couple of decisions the DRC made that the design review, uh, the development review board didn't take the DRC's guidance on it and still you know, made a decision on a project independent of the guidance of this body. So, um, yeah. you know, that this hopefully will um, not prevent that, because that's always an option, but will at least support and strengthen the, pro the, the, the normal process yeah. as it is forward. Yes, because we're advisory, but if there's more detail mm -hmm. to the advice given, maybe. Yeah. Well, the, the decision becomes less decisions. subjective, yes. mm -hmm. and it becomes something that's based more in. I, I like think there's, I, the, there's a provision in here for consulting the Preservation Commission there's an issue about historic whether whether something is is a character defining feature it, it comes back and it, the DRB can come to the to the preservation commission to make those de decisions which is I think the way it should be mm -hmm. Did that get in there or was that just a discussion piece? Um, I, th I think that got in here. One of those HPC making a judgment call on something, um, Mike said, you can't do under state statute. So uh, there's one of them that I had to, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys, there's one we'll, we'll that, talk that about. yeah, we'll <laughs> talk about it. Yeah. So as, as uh, on the administrative side versus my being staffed for the HPC, there's a little bit yeah. of conflict. I think, um, <laughs> so the, just giving you a heads the up, the planning intent commission. The behind it was so that if you were all to make a recommendation to the DRB that something shouldn't be done a certain way, um, if you're giving that to the property owner, and they go to the DRB and say, no, that's not historic, that's not a character-defining feature, the DRB could then theoretically, mm -hmm. if this stays in, <laughs> um, uh, go to the Preservation Commission and say, you know, from the Preservation Commission's standpoint is this something that contributes to the historic character of the building in the district um, to, that, to help clarify that, the issue that one stayed in I think it was the definition of historic building or something where it was the or as designated by the HPC and Mike said that, that one wouldn't work which one is Let's that? Let's talk about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's, so hold on. Yep. The, of course <laughs> Not, we don't even talk about that now. Well, <laughs> no, we just right? marked it. Uh, yeah. Well, we might as well push it. That's what I, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, state statute allows for local designations. Yep. The historic building definition. Mm -hmm. 
the any building, so this is on page 13, definition number 12. Any building listed or determined eligible for the State Register or National Register of Historic Places, that's where Mike said to put a period. Because um, he said that uh, the or deemed locally significant by the HPC through testimony, the DRC or DRB hearing, um, he said that the Planning Commission will immediately delete that because applicants need to have a reasonable certainty of what it is that they need to meet. That, ha that applicants not knowing ahead of time whether or not it's histor a historic building is is not correct. Okay. And what we had talked about is that uh, again, with not everything being surveyed to that level, but the Historic Preservation Commission is responsible for that survey, and therefore. Yeah, I think you're going to need to somehow define mm -hmm. this better. Yes, yep. I agree. And be I able think. to sell it to the Planning Commission. Yep. Just letting you know that he Understood. was just like, big red flag for Mike. <laughs> I think it's the deemed locally significant that might need to be struck. Um, I would re rewire that as deemed eligible for the National yeah, I would State Register. <laughs> yeah, but, it would, but I would say it would need to be, I don't know, if that would need to be something that was done before the applicant actually applied versus during the application process. And I think just one of the intents of that is to not have to encumber the applicant to go out and hire a professional consultant to evaluate it. Because that yep. that's that the, the district was established yep. through qualified professionals research and mm -hmm. recommendations. And so that's Sort of how we had envisioned. I think the preservation commission could Help just <laughs> offer that, offer that uh, service to the public. But yeah, you know, that we, we can it, we can look at buildings, look at pictures. And we could have. We don't want it to be seen as an overreach. That's yeah. anyway. I'm just I'm giving you, know, you a preview of where planning. Well, he thinks planning Thank commission you. is going to go on that one because he was. But if you, you don't know, overreach, Jamie. Nobody is going to give you something you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess that would be my other question for the DRC is through your experiences with applications, have there been situations where you just felt like, I really wish the regulation covered this? I wish that there was a mechanism, a standard guidance. Um, because you're the, you're the one seeing what's kind of coming through. Like with some of these bigger development projects, did you wish you had some other tool or guidance? Or did you feel like what you had, you know, set the right direction, you got the information you needed? Um, that's a great question. And I don't know that, that I This is the opportunity the to put suggestions in that if you feel like there's been a, a, a gap. Yeah, that'd be great. That's uh, be nice. It'd be hard to be specific on some of the criteria. Again, the criteria is pretty broad now, and some of it's, much of it's objective, some of it's subjective, to try to more closely define it. I don't know if you're going to cover all the situations, but there, uh, and, and or if there are application requirements for something, I, I don't know. Well, I guess what I would also say from my experience coming on the board, and I, you know, there was no training. I just sort of showed up, and here I am. I, sure, I got an opinion. You want to hear it? <laughs> uh, so as far as, I don't feel like there has been any sort of. So, one of the, so uh, maybe we have a, a thing in here that says, you know, um, and I don't know if this is the right spot or not, because I believe that the HPC is supposed to provide some training and guidance to the DRC. I think Sarah said that at one point, yeah. and I don't know if we put that in here somewhere. Uh, it would be, I think it would be more just HPC working with the Department of Planning, because mm -hmm. I mean, that's when Martha came yeah. on. I did my best to put together a package of stuff, but. It doesn't the, help that I haven't been the, here that long yeah. either. The, the other thing we discussed was, uh, I, I don't, we didn't figure out a system for that, but having somebody from 
the HPC beyond the design review. I mean, I, I've done both for years, and but uh, you're it. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, but to have retire. a requirement that <laughs> that no, you're never going to retire. Yep, and we so that would device chairs. that would be <laughs> DRC um, rules of procedure. So that's a different. That's set that's of a rules. different set yeah. of rules. That's not these. That's rules of procedure as well as um, getting city council approval for that for requirements for DRC members. But that doesn't really deal with the training. I think the training is more of a planning department policy issue. Um, and that's like right now, like we had a whole a huge switch over on development review board. And the, we're, now that things are slowing down, we're actually planning some training for them. The Historic so Preservation Commission, be because we're a certified local government, has certain requirements for, for the people that have to be on the commission. Architect, architectural historian. So, but that's not true for they can put anybody they want to on the DRC. I think there's some general standards, but pretty much. So, more training for DRC. Yeah. Yep. That would have been helpful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like a chance to take a look at these, especially the parts that you emphasized, mm -hmm. and get back. I'll get back to you, Meredith. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Send me any comments, suggestions. Um, and that is the other thing to remember, just for like the DRC training issue. Ask me stuff, and I can try and find a way to make it happen. <laughs> Okay, I'll ask a question. What happened on Clip Street? Oh. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh. Is that a somebody conversation else. for a different situation? Yeah. No, it's just an issue where somebody had problems with peeling paint on a building, and they decided after talking to the, uh, the ten men that the solution was to put rigid insulation with vinyl siding over it to hide the... Oh. The deteriorating clapboards underneath. Okay. And he, the decision was made. I mean, I wasn't the chairman at the time. The decision was made that uh, they probably should take that all off and deal with it in a better in a better way. And per personally, I would wouldn't have bothered with the siding to begin with because they're just basically hiding deteriorating materials, which are going to continue to deteriorate. But somebody took umbrage with the, the the way the decision was made, and he didn't want to spend the money. He already had, had an outlay. He already so, have done it, and it was already oh. mostly done. Yeah. Oh. And then that, there's a, you know, I, people from Cliff Street got organized and just did not want designer review because of some decisions that had been made there in the past. And I guess it's that Cliff Street is out now, isn't it? Design review. Mm. I can't even remember to be honest. So it's not like it's gone exactly. through and checked all of them. It's out Hold out, but not, not legally. We'll put yeah. it back in again. <laughs> There's no uh, legal standing in there. The city council did. All it could that, be challenged okay. either way very easily. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I wasn't here for that. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you don't do anything, because, because they might be challenged. Oh, did we okay. reverse the <laughs> development <laughs> review boards? They got weird advisory. They reversed the decision. Well, that went to environmental court. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, and it was, Good times. it was sort of <laughs> decision was sort of like cutting the baby in half. That uh, weird decision. Anyway. Okay. Well, thank you for your uh, attention and consideration of all this, and uh, okay. we really would value your feedback. So. Thank you for the work. Thanks for coming. Thank you for the work all of you have done putting that together. It, it was really a good committee and exercise. Step away from the table. Yeah. <laughs> Run. Have a good night. Yeah. Good night, guys. Thank you for coming.
keep this? Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah. So do you want to do minute approvals and? Yes. Okay. We can look through those pretty quickly. The first set of minutes is for October the 15th. I'll move and that. we have Eric, Seth, and Ben here. Three people to approve it. I'll move Early. approval. Second. I haven't even looked at them, but sure. <laughs> We've seen them a few times, but I think you haven't been here. All in favor of approving the 15th? Mm -hmm. Ben hasn't voted yet. Gotta wait for Ben to Okay. <laughs> okay, those are approved. Okay, the next set of minutes is for October the 30th. Boom. This was the, uh, the parking garage. That yep. was the beginning. We reviewed these once, yes, yes, but it was the wrong draft that you reviewed. Yes. So I made all the changes that needed to happen. So you're reviewing them again. Anybody have any other questions, comments, suggestions regarding those minutes? And then again, it was myself. Eric, Seth, and Ben. So, Eric moved. I, you moved to approve? Yes. <laughs> Do I hear a second for this one? I'll second. All in favor of approving the 30th, October 30th. Raise your hand. Okay, that one's approved. Yay. And then we're out to December. We're actually moving forward. <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> Steve had a Seth and Martha. <laughs> This is a uh, new sign at the rear of the building, 32 Main. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Was basically the three by three sign. That was pretty yep. much. The yep. Set. Do you hear a motion to approve that one? I'll move to approve it. I'll second. And all in favor of that? On December 3rd. That one is approved. Awesome. Okay, so got, those. got those done. And then if you want to, there's some minor changes to the DRC rules of procedure that needed to happen. Okay. Um, so you can, it's changes on page two, three, and four. Really minor stuff about when the meetings are held. Okay. So if you want to do that now, you can. I'll move approval. Well, here are seconds Change. for those changes. Second. Okay. All in favor of the changes for the rules of procedure, raise your hand. We've been operating this way, right? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Oh, the okay. rules of procedure just never changed. It's just Got formalized. It. Okay. it was just, I was going through all the rules We're of procedure and went, doing. wait, okay. nobody <laughs> actually <laughs> approved these. Like, it is Monday, <laughs> Yes. Right? Okay. Because it, it's not changing what you're doing. It's just making sure the rules of procedure actually meet, match with what you do. Got it. Yes. I say we'll do what we damn well please. <laughs> awesome. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? You do. <laughs> do I hear a second? Second. All in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. Meeting is adjourned. Good. Thank you. Thank you.